Hey, what's up guys? So I got kind of a cool hack here for the trig board that you might find useful. Um, I think one of the best applications for the trig board has been to monitor doors and windows using cheap magnetic door switches. So as you see here, the setup, the way I'm using this board currently and the way I'm going to install it is to monitor my garage door. So as soon as the garage opens, it wakes up the trig board from that ultra low power deep sleep state, connects to the Wi-Fi network, and then sends out a push notification using Push Safer. You see here, instantly to my phone. So that's great and all, but the problem with this is a lot of times I wanna know if my garage is still open. So that's what this hack is going to discuss. Basically, is there a way we can check that digital input without being triggered? Because that's the whole secret sauce to the trig board is this ultra low power way to wake it up. So the hack is a very simple thing. It's a one item hack, less than 50 cents. And uh, let's go ahead and dig into it. All right, so let's just quickly look at the schematic here and that'll kind of help us see how this hack works. So this schematic is pretty much the same as previous versions of the trig board. Uh, you can go back and watch the very long hardware walkthrough of the trig board where I explain how all of this works. Uh, but just to quickly recap that, right here is where that door switch connects into. This is the connector where we're essentially just monitoring VBAT through that dry contact back into pin three of this supervisor chip. And that is what generates our pulse to wake the entire system up that wakes this timer up and then that enables the 3.3 volt regulator. So again, that's how we're able to maintain that ultra low power, less than one microamp sleep current because we're actually killing power to the ESP8266. So that generates our pulse and that's all we get from the digital input. We don't get anything else. All we get is that pulse. So once the garage opens, we get our notification, it goes back to sleep. So there's nothing else we can really do with the digital input. But we do have this timer that by default wakes up once an hour. And the intention for the timer was so that you could collect other information. Like, you know, I've got uh, a, a board out on the front porch, wakes up once an hour. It doesn't have anything connected to the digital input, but it wakes up once an hour, connects to a BME 280, and sends some weather data up to the cloud. So that's kind of an interesting way to use the timer. So in this example here though, with this hack, what we can do is with this MOSFET over here, go and read the state of pin three at the supervisor. So we're not going to get, you know, instantaneously if you left the garage open, but within an hour, you will get a notification telling you that hey, the garage is still open. So the way the code then works now is it wakes up and if it sees that it was a timer wake, it will check GPIO 13 over here and see if it is high or low to determine if the garage is still open. And we'll, we'll get into the code here in a second. So just a few other comments here. So this is kind of cool because this MOSFET gate pulls no current. It's a voltage controlled device and well, virtually no current. And one of the nice things here though, is that pin three actually keeps the gate low, which is good because that means we don't have to strap it with a resistor. See, normally I'd wanna put a pull down resistor on this gate so that when we lose VBAT, it pulls this hard low. The problem with that resistor, even if it's a mega ohm, when VBAT, is connected through when the door is shut. You've got that dry contact closed. Now you have suddenly VBAT across the one mega ohm resistor and that just wastes current. So what's nice again though, you don't need that resistor. And I've been testing this for a few days now and it seems to work pretty good. So that is all that's needed for the hack. So let me shoot over here to the wiki just to show you this first. So that timer resistor, you could change if you wanted to. If you, I have some silk screen here on the board indicating where that resistor is. So if you wanted to wake up more frequently, so if you, were, if you wanted to use the board for this purpose using the hack, 
but you didn't want to wait an hour, maybe you wanted to wait 15 minutes, then you could change this resistor out according to the value recommended in the TPL 5111 data sheet. So you could do that. So anyway, let's go now over to the wiki page I created for this hack. So if you go to Trigboard Still On page, which all, I'll have links to all this stuff in the description below, you can see that it's very simple. So there is the hack, and I'm just showing you some up close shots of how it's, it's soldered on. You see that the source of that MOSFET needs to be tied to ground. So one leg of the reset switch right there. Then on the other side of the board, the gate is on the cathode side of D1 right there. And then the drain over to 13. That's one of those expansion pads. So if I kind of zoom in on that, you can see it. It's kind of delicate soldering, but um, I kept the leads long here just in these pictures so that you can see where things go. But obviously you can cut those way down. Um, and this MOSFET is just a standard run-of-the-mill 2N7000. And I've got a link here uh, to the DigiKey page for where you can get that. So that's all there is to it. Now let's jump into the code. Okay, so now we're looking at the code and this is the same base code that's up on the wiki actually. So if I go back here to the base firmware section, which I'm just gonna go here, base firmware, it's actually this code right here that I pulled down and modified. So you could actually uh, put the, your existing trig board into OTA mode and simply um, upload the bin file. So if you watch this video here on programming, I have a whole uh, explanation as to how that works. But anyway, I'm gonna go now back over to the code. So I pulled that down and only made modifications for this hack. So there's the still on pin, pin 13. And then if we jump over to check trigger, you'll see that the only updates are right here. So immediately what we do is enable the pull up on that pin. So it's an input and I don't have any resistors. So I wanna use the internal pull ups of the ESP8266. And then we read that pin and if it's high, we know that it is still on. So that means that we still have the uh, the the uh, input is still open. So let's jump back over to the schematic and see what that means. So if it's high, that means that this is low because it is an N-channel FET. So when the VBAT is connected on through, so when our garage is closed, this is connected on through, we have VBAT sitting here, that'll pull this low. So if we see it's low, that means the door is closed. So we're good. We only care about the opened state. So that's why I have this variable here still on. And we set that to true. Now, if you're going to use this in a normally open style, meaning that you trigger on the closure of a contact, you may need to make some changes in here. But by default, everything works as a normally closed type contact. So again, triggers when we open the contact like most um, door switches are. So, okay, so we get in here and we set that and then you'll see we print out input is open, otherwise input is closed. And then that's it. So then when we jump over here, I'm gonna go down. Now, right here, when we decide to send a notification or not, we will send one if we were externally woken <laughs> uh, or if the battery voltage is low or now if we're still on. And then we go work on through until we get to push safer here. And this is right where we, dis where we actually compile the message we're going to send out. So right in here we see that, yeah, the, the battery voltage is good, but now if we're still on and we were not externally awoken, that means that the timer woke us up, then we want the message to be sent out as still with our message, because that's the message comes from the captive portal window. So typically I'd make that message, this message would be open. 
So, I'll, and I'll show you some examples of this here in a second. So that'll be still open, otherwise just our normal message, which would be garage open. And then, yeah, if the battery is not good, we're just gonna send out battery low. That's all we wanna see, which, side story, is actually a really good thing to put on because before I started making the battery low, the main message in the notification, one of my boards, the battery was going low and it started triggering when I was not home. So I thought that the back door was actually being opened until I opened up the message and looked at what it was and it saw that it was battery low. So based on that experience though, now the main message comes in battery low. So I know right away that it's just a battery low notification. Okay, so anyway, that is all there is to the code. Okay, so now I just wanna work through a full scenario here. Let's open the garage normally. The board sees that as an external wake, connects to the Wi-Fi network, sends the notification out via the push safer service. We see that there, it says garage opened. Now we'll leave the garage open and simulate a timer wake. And we can do that by pressing the wake button on the other side very quickly. And if we press this very quickly, it will think it's a timer wake. And it woke it up. And because the LED's on right now, I can tell you that it saw that external input was still open. And we get that notification now as garage still opened, which is kind of cool. So there you have it. We put the sensor back there close to the switch and then now we'll do another timer wake and it wakes up checks that input and goes right back to sleep you can see how quickly the led turns off there you have it and then another wake and then that's a normal external wake so we'll get the same garage opened uh, notification so there you have it now we have a normal garage open and then after the one hour has elapsed, we would get the garage still opened. So there you have it, kind of a cool way to use the trig board on these kinds of applications if you need it. Very easy to hack in, and as you can see, the code is easy. So uh, in the downloads section, uh, or in the description below, you check out the wiki and pull the zip down for this code and you can actually if you watch the video on how to OTA program very easily uh, load that bin file so that's everything I've got thanks for watching